Hello, welcome back to the second installment of the COVID-19 inspired video lecture series for Mr. Billingham's BC Calculus class. I've decided after the lengthy 10.1 video to break 10.2 up into smaller uh, bite-sized pieces. So today we're going to be working on approximating the natural log of 1 plus x with a polynomial function. I want to start by thinking back to a uh, linearization. I've written here the formula for the linearization of a function f. Uh, it has two properties. You'll notice that L of a would be equal to f of a, and L prime of a would be equal to f prime of a. And so what that means is the function and the linearization match both in the value of the function and the value of the derivative of the function at a. And the idea of approximating a function with a polynomial is to just extend that, to just to make sure that the polynomial and the function have the same zeroth derivative, that's the same function value at, at a point, they have the same first derivative, same second derivative, same third derivative, and so on. And that's the whole idea behind it. So if we consider looking for a polynomial to approximate the natural log of 1 plus x, let's start by writing out such a polynomial. To make sure the process doesn't take too long, let's agree we'll just find a fourth degree polynomial that matches up with natural log of x. Now, I want to make the two match in all their derivatives at x equals 0. So to start off, we note that f of 0 is natural log of 1, which is 0. p of 0 would be just a naught. The conclusion, a naught must be 0. Let's take the derivative of both sides. We want the first derivative at 0 to be the same for both f and p. Therefore, and the conclusion that we reach is that a1 must be 1. Proceeding on to the next derivative. Now, again, we want the second derivatives to match at our center, which is 0. So we need that f double prime of 0, which is negative 1, must equal p double prime of 0, which is 2a2. So our conclusion is that 2a2 is equal to negative 1, or a2 is negative 1 half. Let's take the third derivative. We want the third derivatives to match up perfectly at 0, so we conclude that f triple prime of 0, which would be 2 over 0 plus 1 cubed, or 2, must equal p triple prime of 0, which is 6a3. The conclusion is that 6a3 must equal 2, and that a3 is 1 third. Let's go ahead and take the fourth derivatives. We're getting close to the end. Setting x to 0 on both sides, we find out that
you should probably notice some interesting little patterns here. The coefficient is the reciprocal of the exponent for each x, and the terms alternate in sign, with the even terms having a negative coefficient and the odd terms having a positive coefficient. So we could well imagine the next term would be plus a fifth x to the fifth, minus a sixth x to the sixth, and so on. I want to point out there's a totally different way we could have gotten the same function. From the material in 10.1 and the video, if you watched it, we could have gotten this infinite series. Here, think of a as 1 and r as negative x. 1 over 1 plus x would be equal to 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed. And let's think about the generic term. It's going to be negative 1 to some power times x to the k. Now, when the power is an odd number, we want the sign to come out negative. So this will do nicely for our formula. Now, to get from here to the power series or the polynomial function for 1 plus x, just integrate both sides. And to get the generic term, just integrate the generic term. So negative 1 to the k, x to the k plus 1, over k plus 1. Now, technically, we do need a constant. The, uh, the constant, however, is pretty simple, because if I set x to 0, I see the left side is natural log of 1, which is 0, and the right side is 0, so the constant has to be 0. So this should indicate two different ways of calculating a polynomial function for the natural log of 1 plus x, one of which we do by brute force, by writing out a polynomial and making sure that the zeroth derivatives, the first derivative, the second derivative, the third derivatives are all equal, etc. The other one by being clever and thinking of 1 over 1 plus x as a geometric series and integrating both sides to get a formula for natural log of 1 plus x. Both work. I think the second one is easier, but the first method illustrates the whole idea behind constructing a Taylor polynomial. I hope everyone follows that when I say the zeroth derivative of a function, I mean the function itself. Um, I do think it's worthwhile looking at some graphs of how well different pieces of this correspond to the um, function natural log of 1 plus x. So I can look at, for instance, the, uh, the first degree term. This is just basically the linearization of natural log of 1 plus x at x equals 0, and it's just p of x equals x, just the first degree term. Let's go ahead and add in the second degree term. In the second graph, we've added in a quadratic term based on the second derivative matching at x equals 0, and you notice it is certainly matching better. I've added in a cubic term which was the third term we generated by both the brute force method and also integrating a geometric series. And notice we're quite good on most of the interval of convergence, which is from negative 1 to 1. The key things to remember here are that the function and the polynomial approximating it get closer and closer and closer on the interval of convergence as you add more and more terms. And within the interval of convergence, the infinite power series is exactly equal to the function. We'll continue this with the next video when we look at a power series slash Taylor series for both sine of x and cosine of x. Until then, stay healthy, stay entertained, and I hope to see you before this is all over. Thank you. Bye-bye.